I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. During Senate floor remarks on Wednesday, Senator Ed Markey labeled the Supreme Court as, quote, illegitimate, stolen, and radicalized for jeopardizing the rights of Americans. Last month, the conservative majority of the Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, which granted the right to an abortion. In his concurring opinion, Justice Clarence Thomas detailed other cases he believed should be reconsidered, such as same-sex marriage and the right to contraception. Markey described Thomas's opinion as a trailer for an upcoming horror film. Uh, I thank, uh, uh, I, I thank you, uh, Madam President. An illegitimate, stolen, and radicalized United States Supreme Court is putting the fundamental rights of Americans in jeopardy. Last month, the extremist court took away the right to abortion, a right on which millions of Americans have relied for almost 50 years, undermining their health, their safety, their freedom. The right-wing majority that overturned Roe v. Wade owes its control of the high court to then-leader McConnell's and Donald Trump's and Senate Republicans' theft of two seats on the Supreme Court. The justices used their ill-gotten power to cast aside decades of precedent, precedent which during their confirmation hearings they promised to honor, respect, and follow. If anyone thinks this newly empowered court's decision to strip Americans of a long-standing constitutional right won't be shamelessly repeated, they are wrong. What the Supreme Court just did with Roe is a preview of coming atrocities from this Supreme Court. Justice Clarence Thomas wrote a concurring opinion in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, the decision overturning Roe versus Wade. And that concurrence is like a movie trailer for an upcoming horror film that Americans are going to be forced to watch written, produced, and directed by a captured, illegitimate Supreme Court. In his opinion, Justice Thomas made clear that he believed Americans had too many privacy rights under the United States Constitution, that the Supreme Court had erred in recognizing those rights, and that the court should take them away as well, just as it did with the right to abortion. This bears repeating. A sitting, sitting, sitting justice on the Supreme Court of the United States is arguing that Americans have too many rights. What mistakes was Justice Thomas talking about? Well, Justice Thomas urged the court to correct the error the court committed when it recognized this right to same-sex marriage in its 2015 decision in Obergefell, versus Hodges. He told the court to fix the mistake it made when it recognized the right of Americans to engage in private consensual sexual activity in its 2003 decision in Lawrence versus Texas. And he said the court got it wrong when it recognized the right of Americans to use contraception in its 1965 decision in Griswold versus Connecticut. But it is Justice Thomas who is in error. Who's wrong? Who's made a mistake? These are all fundamental privacy-based rights which the Supreme Court correctly recognized. They should all remain the law of the land. Today, I want to talk about the right to contraception that this extremist and out-of-touch Supreme Court and legislators and red states are taking aim at. The Supreme Court has recognized the constitutional right to contraception for more than half a century. Since its decision in the Griswold case in 1965. And over time, the court has affirmed and expanded that right. In its 1972 decision, a Massachusetts case, Eisenstadt versus Baird, recognizing the right of all people to access contraceptives regardless of marital status. And in its 1977 decision in Carey versus Population Services International, which held that a state could not constitutionally 
prohibit the distribution of contraceptives to minors. The right to contraception is therefore a fundamental right that the court has repeatedly recognized and reaffirmed. It is a right that is central to a person's health, to their well-being, to their life, liberty, equality, and economic and social freedom in our country. It is a right grounded in the need and ability to make decisions about one's own body, one's own family, and one's own future. It is a right that is woven into the fabric of a free, pluralistic, and modern society. And it is a right that we must codify and make part of our law so that far-right extremist judges and elected officials cannot take it away in order to advance their own blatantly political agendas. That is why I have proudly introduced the Right to Contraception Act with my colleagues, Senators Maisie Hirono and Tammy Duckworth, uh, and with Senator Blumenthal and Chair Patty Murray of the Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions, and joined by more than half of the Democratic Senate caucus. The Right to Contraception Act would codify the Supreme Court's decision in Griswold recognizing the right to obtain and use contraception. The Right to Contraception Act would enshrine that right in federal law, and it would guarantee a health care provider's right to prescribe contraceptive products and services and information related to them. The bill would also protect a range of contraceptives that are legally marketed under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And the Right to Contraception Act would authorize the U.S. Attorney General, as well as individuals and health care providers, harmed by unlawful restrictions to go to court to enforce the rights the bill establishes. In short, the Right to Contraception Act would safeguard the rights established by more than 50 years of Supreme Court precedent and would protect access to contraception even if Griswold were overturned. The concerns that have led to the introduction of this bill are not merely hypothetical. Justice Thomas's concurring opinion was a call to action that some Republicans and red states are eagerly heeding by continuing to attack and to restrict the right to contraception. Several states have already gone after access to contraception by cutting off public funding for it, by seeking to define abortion broadly enough to include contraception and by allowing health care providers to refuse to provide services related to contraception based on their own personal beliefs. And the harms that would flow from abolishing the right to contraception aren't merely theoretical. Attacks on health care, especially reproductive health care, falls hardest on historically marginalized communities, including black, indigenous, and other people of color. LGBTQ people, people with disabilities, people with low incomes, those living in rural and underserved areas, and immigrants. Last week, we all, on our side, proudly watched the House pass its version of the, of the Right to Contraception Act by a vote of 220 to 195. And though it is dis dismaying, only eight House Republicans, only eight, voted to codify that right. With the right to abortion stolen and the right to contraception threatened and the need to protect and expand access to contraceptive me uh, methods and information on contraception, it makes it more imperative than ever that we pass this legislation. We can't wait for the next hammer to drop. We have, to, we have an urgent obligation to take the first exit off this slippery slope that leads to the loss 